there are a few ways in which I am not all that much like other people. One of which is that I cry very, very easily at movies, TV shows. I'll, I'll cry at uh, things you might expect, the end of Field of Dreams, the end of Shawshank, right? You know, sort of your, your standard order things that you would expect someone to cry at. I'll also cry at like Super Bowl commercials, <laughs> you know, a particularly poignant card in Walgreens will get me going. But you know, in the first category in things you would expect I would cry at, there is of course the uh, Jim Henson opus, The Muppets Take Manhattan. Hot Muppet Take, third best, maybe even second best Muppet movie. Happy to talk about that afterwards. There's a scene towards the end of the movie. The Muppets have been trying to put a show on as they so often do. The show hasn't been working. Kermit gets amnesia. He is karate chopped out of amnesia. Spoiler alert, it's confusing. I can also explain that later. <laughs> and after Kermit is karate chopped out of amnesia, everybody's there and they're like, all right, let's go. It's time to, it's time to go put on the show. And all of the you know, various characters that the Muppets have come in contact with over the movie are, are there. And Fozzie, I am not kidding. I am legitimately getting choked up thinking about this scene from a Muppet movie right now. This is not that. Yeah. Fozzie says to Kermit, Kermit, can our friends watch the show? Can the, can the Muppets, the Muppet friends, right? can they watch the show? And Kermit says, no, no. That's what the show has been missing. They're not going to watch the show. They're going to be in the show. Thank you very much. That's what's up. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's what the show has been missing. We need more frogs and dogs and bears and chickens and whatever. You're not going to watch the show. You're going to be in the show. And then, of course, Muppets, the show proves to be a smashing success. There's a wedding, it's a whole thing, right? That's right. And I think that gets me emotional for a few reasons. One, Muppets are awesome. And, and I think there's a rich spiritual message in there. It takes everybody. It takes everybody. Everybody has worth. Everybody has value. And everyone is needed for the larger whole to work. Which of course gets me thinking about this week's Torah portion, the coup day. We've been building the Mishkan, the tabernacle for a few weeks now. And we get this climactic spiritual moment where the presence of God descends down into what the Israelites have been working on for so long. It's this peak moment. And all the Israelites are watching. And there's a Hasidic teaching that says, once the presence of God had descended, for all the Israelites who were there, they were no longer able to pick out what they themselves had specifically donated. Some people had brought tent pegs. Some people had brought gold. Some people had brought fine fabric. Some people had just brought plain old pegs of wood. And yet, in that moment, their contributions were indistinguishable from one another. And so in a way, that's the spiritual revelation of that moment. That what has been generated initially as disparate parts has come together into that larger whole. And so within that, within that Hasidic teaching is a message for us that we're aiming for that level of solidarity and connection if we're talking about building a spiritual community. It takes everybody. Now, it's important to note, this has been a lot of work. It's great that this has paid off the building of this tabernacle. But it's also possible to think about this, that it wasn't just physical work. The Nitivot Shalom, the great Hasidic sage, Rab Shalom Noach of Slonim, when he's talking about the very beginning of this project, there's a famous verse, You shall make yourselves a sanctuary and I shall dwell within it. But what, that, what 
the Sloan Marebi says, he says this isn't just about the making of this physical space. This is an obligation for each Jew individually to sanctify their being to become a sanctuary. It's not out here. It's not only out here. It's in here. It's about the work that each one of us has to do within ourselves to make it possible to fully open ourselves up to divinity and to holiness. And he goes on in his teaching to talk about in the Israelites' wanderings through the desert, we're told that there were 42 different points that they stopped on along their way. And he says that wasn't just then, that's also now. In the course of their lives, each and every single Jew goes through all 42 of those stages. And so it's then actually a radical rereading of this narrative. It's not about collective building of a physical structure that then wandered through the desert. It's about each of us within ourselves doing spiritual work to equip us on our own individual journeys. And that that spiritual connection is what's necessary for each of us to get where we need to go. So which one is it? Communal work, individual work, physical work, spiritual work? And the answer, of course, is yes. All of it. As we say, it's a both and. I have to do that personal individual work because it plays a role in the larger communal effort. And within that larger community, that helps create a space where I, as an individual, can do the work that I want to do and need to do. Everyone has their own stuff. Everyone has their own journey. And if I'm really doing the work, if you're really doing the work, that might mean that you're going to be able to teach me something that I need to learn. So it's not about me doing this in a silo. It's about us sharing in this work together so that we can further advance ourselves collectively. And there's another piece of that too, which is that I am confident in saying that whatever you're going through in your life, I don't know this for sure, but I'm confident in saying tonight that whatever you're going through right now, there is at least one other person in this room going through something similar. And so the work that you need to do within yourself to create that sanctuary, the experience that you get, you can then share the wisdom that you have learned on your journey, which is then what makes it possible for us to create our shared collective holy space. And I think it's important to say it explicitly. There is still, still a real stigma around the label of alcoholic, of addict, in our community, in the Jewish community at large, in the world. And the truth of the matter is, I'm sure that you know someone who struggled with that. If not you yourself, it's a family member or it's a friend. And if you really don't know anyone, God bless you, you're very, very lucky. But alcoholics and addicts aren't them. They're us. It's all of us. It takes everybody. Because that's the only way that we can make sure that the Mishkan that we're trying to build can hold the kind of spiritual experience that's this peak moment at the end of the book of Exodus. It doesn't say everybody with 30 days or more of sobriety got to enjoy that and everybody else had to wait outside in the van. That's not what it says. It said everybody. At the end of the book, at the end of any book of the Torah, we say, chazak, chazak, venit chazik, which roughly can be translated as, we have been strong, we have been strong, and we will be strengthened. And I think it's important to note that that sense of us being strengthened, it's in the plural. It's not in the individual. Because ultimately where we truly derive strength from is from other people. It's from our community. And that in order for us 
to do the difficult, difficult and holy work of creating that space, we ultimately need to find that strength with and through each other. And we go on our journeys and we learn our wisdom and we share it. And we learn from another person and we go on our journeys and we share it. It's a dance, it's reciprocal, but that's how the work is woven and that's how community is built. So some of us are frogs and some of us are bears and some of us are chickens. Some of us are Miss Piggies, and yes, much like Gonzo, some of us are even whatevers. But ultimately, in order for this to work, we all need to be in it together. It takes everybody. And ultimately, it's an incomplete project, and it's an incomplete story, unless everyone is a part of it. We need all of our experiences and our learning to get where we need to go and where we're obligated to go and where we want to go. And so with that in mind, I'm so glad and I'm so grateful that we're creating space for that holy work here together the Shabbat. And I hope we'll be able to do that for many more Shabbatot moving forward. Shabbat Shalom, everyone.